<laughs> I actually wanted to go back to something that Jessica was saying, in that um, the way you were pointing out how The Sims was seen as like a casual kids game, and then um, we're, we were getting into these more mature titles with Mass Effect that are made for older audiences. And for me, it's funny because I think I was born right at the perfect time that with me discovering that I was gay and coming out, games kind of came out with me. <laughs> and, and the fact that like when I was in middle school, like that's when I was playing Sims, and that's when I was like, oh wait, like maybe. Like, this isn't, like, why am I fucking around with these avatars like this? Like, <laughs> and, and I think that, uh, that kind of continued, though, because then I got older and I realized that um, with, with games like Mass Effect, which were closer to the games that I was actually playing and actually interested in that time, to suddenly see LGBT, LGBT themes come up in those games was awesome for me. And so I, I'd actually say I'm really lucky because it, I went from being a kid where games really were, were, yeah, they, they just didn't talk about it. And it was, it was sort of that thing where it was ignorance. And so I, I think people thought maybe if we ignore it, like, we're not, we just don't have to have an opinion, and so we're safe. But I don't think ignorance is any in any way, shape, or form acceptance. So it was nice to have it develop as I was developing, I guess. That's really interesting to hear, um, especially as a developer um, of these types of games. When you're a developer, uh, so I played The Sims for a while and then I started working on The Sims, and it's a very different relationship when you're working on a game. Um, and in a way, you almost lose touch with the playing of the game, uh, which is a conversation we were just having over there. And so I was really inspired by that story. That was really cool. Because uh, the fact that uh, a game and a, and a decision that seemed obvious to us at the time helps people uh, in that way to sort of discover themselves. You know, there's, there's nothing so great than getting a, a, an email from uh, someone who said that Dragon Age uh, helped them come out, helped them realize uh, who they were. Or I had one guy who told me, it's actually a very emotional email, he just he said he was thinking of suicide. Wow. And because he was just felt so close up, and it actually, uh, playing the game uh, with his brother, and his brother, I guess, because, you know, it was Alistair, actually. He was just so in love with Alistair. And, uh, <laughs> even though he couldn't romance Alistair, but the, uh, they were playing the game, and, 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 and uh, um, his brother kind of cautiously floated to the, so would you romance Al Alistair? He was an option. And, of course, he was blown away because he had no idea that his brother knew anything at all. And it enabled this conversation between them. That, and his brother told him, yeah, man, I, I've known for a long time, and I totally accept you. <laughs> and he said, you know, obviously, Dragon Age wasn't directly responsible, but the, 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 the fact that it enabled the conversation, and that's not the only, that kind of email I've gotten. It is, it is a really great feeling to, to know that, that, that in some tiny way you've helped people like that. You know, I actually got an email yesterday as I was boarding um, the plane from Burbank to San Francisco from uh, one of our fans who um, I've interacted with a lot at, at conventions and things who has never, it's never been something where she's like, I'm out and proud, but it, 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 it's part of her identity, but she doesn't feel the need to like scream at the rooftop about it. But um, she, she told me that she just got engaged to um, her, her partner that she met um, on Twitter through talking about Mass Effect. And that it was actually it, it was actually Mass Effect that helped her come to terms with the fact that she wasn't straight as she thought for 40 years. That she she was actually a lesbian. And she met this wonderful woman through Mass Effect and last week they got engaged. Even what, what we can do for uh, our gay fans, I think there's also something that, that making it normal and something you encounter for every, every fan out there is a really important thing as well. I mean, I, I just finished playing uh, The Last of Us, and there's a, a character, Bill, uh, comes up. It's not even a, it's not a sexual situation, but in, in, in a, you, you have to infer that he's gay, though it's, it's made pretty plain. But the fact, just the fact that he's there. And he just happens to be a, a gay character that you encounter, and the very the very fact that he's present, I think, is important. And I think that the, as we go on, you know, the the, the 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 this would be a normal thing that nobody would question. That you wouldn't have to write stories about it or comment on it. I think that's 
the way we achieve that kind of inclusivity, right? That it's just, it, it's about being, making interesting characters. They're more diverse because they're interesting, and, and I think that can have a, a, a very important effect. Well. Mm -hmm. Also, just the fact that uh, he mentions his partner uh, earlier on, and then you, uh, he's just like a side character, but you never really see the partner until later, so you don't know who he really is referencing. Like, if it is like a partner in crime, like, it's just very vague. And so, when you do find out later, I think that it was an awesome reveal. And then also, I uh, really appreciated how the other characters in the story uh, reacted to it, and that there, there was no, you know, like shock or surprise, or it was just like, oh, like, I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, it was awesome. That casualness is, is the day that I'm waiting for, personally. The casualness where it's just not an issue. It's just, it's just, it's just not an issue. It's just accepted. It's just there. Like, that's the day that I'm waiting for. That's the day that I'm excited about. Do you think that, that that's, that's too optimistic, though? No. <laughs> <laughs> I just, sometimes it feels like it is, you know? The, the, the kind of ugliness you encounter Maybe. online is, is always present. And you can never be sure whether that's whether there's, it's more out there just under the surface, or whether you're dealing with just this, this small little minority of people that feel that way. I think that's what it is. I mean, honestly, uh, being someone who literally lives on the internet, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and seeing, seeing like some of the, the telemetry about who our players are and, and what they choose to be, I think there's, unfortunately, right now, the way the internet works, and my team's working to change that, but right now, the person who shops the loudest and is able to sit at their computer the longest is the person who wins. And unfortunately, those are people that aren't going to places like this, that aren't going outside and interacting with other people. And <laughs> Maybe they just need some vitamin D. I don't know. So those, those, there's always going to be bigots. Unfortunately, it's just amplified online. I don't think that that actually represents the majority of people because when you go to events, when you go to conventions, I'll get maybe maybe three people in a year that are just creepy and, and rude and awful, and most people are not that way. And, and now the problem is that I'm I'm excited about. I'm I'm not a game designer. I can't do all of those things, but I can have a a voice in shaping the internet that is, let's bring this feeling here to the online space. And then I, I think it, it will be just a non-issue. I think it was an important change for, develop, for from a developer perspective as well. It was not being so afraid of those people and, and getting to the point where you say, no, no, you're the one with the problem. You're the one that has to get over it. You know? <laughs> absolutely nonchalant about the fact that, that he's gay and it's not it's an important step that you don't have to be a certain way to be gay you don't have to fit a certain stereotype and it, it was an issue um, we knew it would be but I am I, I, I'm not happy that there were lots of issues but I am happy that that wasn't the biggest issue I'm happy that that was a bunch of total awful people that I was like, thanks for pointing yourself out, now you were banned. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. 
morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Microphone is not working. <laughs> very like masculine male who then, um, again, very nonchalantly turned out to be gay. Like that—that that is is a great direction that I'd love to move into. Uh, his, his husband though was the deadest husband that has ever been. <laughs> 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 <I'm so good. laughs> There's a movie I don't know if you've seen uh, which had a similar effect called uh, Paranorman. Has anyone seen this movie? Yeah. 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 Right. So they did the same type of thing where at the end, my boyfriend would love you. That was awesome. I love that kind of stuff. It's so just that the, where they're they're playing with those stereotypes where um, where gay doesn't have to be this like extreme stereotype <clears throat> and <clears throat> excuse me. And that's the kind of stuff that I'm super inspired by. Um, so, yeah, on The Sims, um, I love to, uh, I'm, I'm gonna kind of backtrack a little bit. I love to, the way that you put the ick factor, right? Because when you deal with trying to simulate humanity, um, there's, a, there's other very much more significant ick factors that we have to try and take into account. Um, and just, so, uh, from an artificial intelligence point of view, which is what, what I do, um, when you first sort of release Sims into the world um, and give them the ability to woohoo, they'll just they'll just go wild, right? <laughs> you have to add in some of the social inhibitions. Um, and so, like, we have to do things like incest, right? We have to make sure that they that they can't, you know, that you can't sleep with your brother and that kind of stuff. And so. Um, when you have to, to explicitly write code to make sure that that level of big factor doesn't happen, um, homosexuality doesn't seem in any way. <laughs> um, and then you know you have interesting questions with the ESRB where um, you know what was it? They're they're really they're an interesting group because they freaked out one time on The Sims Medieval when there were two uh, two male Sims. Um, sitting on a bench sort of cuddling um, because the rule was um, we weren't allowed to have homosexual encounters unless the player initiated something, unless the player determined yes. So Sims all start out basically asexual and then uh, based on whether you uh, initiate same sex or opposite sex uh, relations then it starts making setting flags and stuff. Um, so they freaked out because they said that there was none of that stuff. Um, yet, then we start asking them uh, other interesting questions about like, well, what happens if you have two step-siblings or if you have like step-sibling and step-parent and all that stuff, and they're like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so it's sort of weird what they like and what they don't, and very much based on like the game as well. Um, so the ESRB is very interesting, and I think that they're going to be um, an interesting group to try and win over um, to hopefully reach a world where it is just not an issue to where they there's not even a checkbox on whatever checklist that they have when they go through games, right? Um, well, speaking from the, the perspective of the games that I've worked on, I think the the the, the effect that uh, the gay romances uh, that we've had uh, that is important for the industry, I think, is in the, in the way, in the way that. It's kind of debunked a lot of the assumptions we had prior to uh, to why we were doing that. I mean, uh, we're we're a pretty big company. Our games are pretty high profile, and I think it's it's fair to say that uh, our taking that step affected our sales in absolutely no way whatsoever. I mean, maybe there's people who who, who didn't like it and, and say they're not going to buy a Bioware game because it has optional gay romances that they don't have to use, but other people might. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, if that's the stance they want to take, cool. But I think we have equal evidence that there are people who bought the game specifically because it included that. You know, we, and I think that's, that's, part, that's important as well, like seeing um, gay fans self-identify, like on our fours, people who have come, come and said, uh, I have bought this game because I heard it had gay romances, and I, I wouldn't even normally have played the game, but I went out and bought it. That's the sort of language that companies listen to. 